Letter one. I then retire to my apartment with regret. The night was so fine that I would gladly have rambled about much longer, yet recollecting that I must rise very early, I reluctantly went to bed. But my senses had been so awake, and my imagination still continued so busy, that I sought for rest in vain. Rising before six, I scented the sweet morning air. I had long before heard the birds twittering to hail the dawning day, though it could scarcely have been allowed to have departed. Nothing, in fact, can equal the beauty of the northern summers, evening and night. If night it may be called that only wants the glare of day, the full light, which frequently seems so impertinent, for I could write at midnight very well without a candle. I contemplated all nature at rest. The rocks, even grown darker in their appearance, looked as if they partook of the general repose and reclined more heavily on their foundation. What, I exclaimed, is this active principle which keeps me still awake? Why fly my thoughts abroad when everything around me appears at home? My child was sleeping with equal calmness, innocent and sweet as the closing flowers. Some recollections attached to the idea of home mingled with reflections respecting the state of society I had been contemplating that evening, made a teardrop on the rosy cheek I had just kissed, and emotions that trembled on the brink of ecstasy and agony gave a poignancy to my sensations, which made me feel more alive than usual. What are these imperious sympathies? How frequently has melancholy and even misanthropy taken possession of me when the world has disgusted me and friends have proved unkind? I have then considered myself as a particle broken off from the grand mass of mankind. I was alone till some involuntary sympathetic emotion, like the attraction of adhesion, made me feel that I was still a part of a mighty whole from which I could not sever myself. Not, perhaps, for the reflection has been carried very far by snapping the thread of an existence which loses its charms in proportion as the cruel experience of life stops or poisons the current of the heart. Futurity, what hast thou not to give to those who know that there is such a thing as happiness? I speak not of philosophical contentment, though pain has afforded them the strongest conviction of all.